right along. Chapter 30, verse 15. Um, chapter 30, verse 15. It says, the Maharesh, you know, you have the page there? Yes. What page is it, Eitan? Nine, nine, I don't know about on nine, nine, ten. Nine, oh, eight. The Maharesh, the Maharesh, the Isha, the Yom, the Yom, and if her husband, normally, by the way, just so everybody knows, that a woman's uh, wife is called an uh, a woman is an Isha, and uh, a man is an Ish. But here, when it says Isha, it doesn't mean the woman. It means her husband. And the way you could tell is with the dot in the hay. It's called a mapike. And that means ha'ish shava. So if her husband will be silent uh, on the day he hears it, they are the hearers or vow. The kim is called the derel, always called sarash and he upholds her vow. He kimosam ki acharish la biyom shemo, and he upheld her vows because he was silent on the day he heard it. Rashi says it's not twenty four hours, but it's until dark that night. He only gets till dark that night to know her vow. Rashi says acharish if he revokes it after he hears it, then she will carry her sin. Hold on one second. He will carry her sin. Yeah, he will carry her sin. <laughs> okay. So what does this mean? Uh, Rashi says, Achrei shamo, achrei shama If he heard it and he upheld it, and he said, Evshibo, bayom, means to say, means to say, the, the verse is speaking about a case in which he can annul it, because once he's upheld it, uh, he can't go back and annul it, even if it's the same day. So Vinasa Savona, he get, bears her, he bears her sin. He enters in her stead. I mean, we learn from here that somebody who causes an obstacle to his friend to sin, he's going to get to sin in his place for all the punishment. Meaning to say, if the husband gives the wife the impression that he annulled it, and then she transgresses, so he's going to bear the sin because he caused her to sin. Vinasa Savona. So, uh, um, Jerry, you had a question? Uh, well, yesterday we uh, uh, we said that the, the young girl uh, has to uh, confess and uh, bear the uh, uh, bear uh, asking for forgiveness. But today we find out that it's the her her father in the same situation. He's the one who has to. Uh, bear the guilt. Well, no, it's it's it depends on the circumstance. Sometimes it's he has to bear the guilt if he tricks her into thinking the sin is annulled, and that then he has to bear the guilt. But if if um, if he did not annul the vow and she sins, then it's her fault. So it depends on the context. But if okay. he tries to annul it <coughs> one day late. Yeah, if he tries to annul one day late and he's not effective, then it's her sin. Unless he tells her that the vow was annulled. If he tricks her into thinking the vow is annulled, then he's going to bear the iniquity. That's what we're saying here. Okay, thank you. So now verse 13. Ela hukim. Asher Tziva Hashem. These are the laws which God commands. Bein Ishli show between husband and his wife, between a father, Bein Avol Bito, between father and daughter, Bein Ura Beis Avia. When she's a daughter in her father's house. Okay, so now we're up to chapter thirty-one. We're a new topic. Baruch Hashem, we're up to a new topic. And by the way, I'd like to take a moment to give uh, big honor to Moshe Snyder. He won he won the he won the belt this morning. He won the he won the push up Olympics. 
And I really like this idea of every morning, everybody taking 60 seconds after davening and doing push-ups. Why not? We have to be in shape. You know, it's a, you have to have a healthy, a healthy soul and a healthy body, and the two go together. If you don't, pull-ups. You could do 60 seconds of whatever you want, but we don't have a thing to do pull-ups here. Just like a jumping jacks. You could do anything. We do 60 seconds of exercise uh, right after davening. It'll be very good. I, I, I think it'll be a good, uh, I, I like that to be our identity, that we do exercise for 60 seconds after davening. What's, what's the downside? Who's with me on this? Who agrees with me? You could do it before davening too, but the problem with doing it before davening is some folks come late and then they'll escape. But if we say we do it after davening, then everybody's there and we'll say we're going to do 60 seconds of some sort of activity, physical activity after davening, just to get your, obviously it's not enough for the day, but it's just to make a point that our yeshiva values exercise as a spiritual pursuit. So, so well, in your spirit. Yeah, you have to. You know, the way that I think about it is like this. This is a, it's a little bit of a tangent, but this is the way I want to encourage everybody to think about it. If somebody, let's say, would lend you like uh, a car to say, I'm going to give you my car to borrow because I like you. I'm going to give you my car. I have a beautiful, uh, a beautiful um, Lincoln Town car. I want you to borrow it. And then I say, just give it back to me in a year. You return this car to me looking full of dents, beat up, not cared for, uh, broken down, and say, here's your car back. Do you think I'll be happy? No. Hashem Yisbarach has given us a body as a loan, as a present to borrow. So if we don't care for it, now, I'm not saying to get upset with our bodies, but we have to show respect to Hashem. Hashem has given us the body. We have to care for it. We have to preserve it. It will help us with our spirituality. And I, I believe in that context, we should be exercising every day. I try, Even though I promise you I have what to do with my wife, I, t I try to take uh, at least a half hour every day to go for a jog because I think we need to exercise every day. And I want to make this point in the mornings after davening by saying we go downstairs before we do our breakfast, before we do our, before we do our, uh, uh, our other activities. We're gonna do push-ups. If you don't want to do push-ups, you could do jumping jacks, etc. I don't object to that. You want to do sit-ups. Sixty seconds of an exercise every morning, just to make the point of our spirituality is tied to taking care of our body. Anybody uh, want to argue on this point? Just add, add diet to it. Yeah, diet. I mean, I'm a very strict diet because I I only I only eat cake and cookies mm -hmm. on Shabbos. I I'm, every other time of the week I'm 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 very careful about what I eat because I learned from the Piyazets Nerav. He said, "Yeah, it's about." And now I, you have to be very careful with diet. I don't really like to talk about it because I don't want to encourage. Uh, I don't want to talk about diet because some people can't handle it. And there's a lot of people who are uh, really struggling with um, different aspects of diet with, uh, with either, either having uh, mental challenges or else they can't control what they eat. And, and I, I want to speak very respectfully about them and carefully, but it's very important to learn self-control. And 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 that is not something that you could just get one day. That's a lifestyle of discipline, of uh, of training. It's not something you could wake up one day. And that's why so many people have difficulties dieting because the people people don't know how to practice self control. Um, it's just a very very hard thing to do. It's all about how we want to live our life in service of God, and it all goes together. And it has to be with consciousness and intent. But anyway, yeah, for sure, I believe that eating healthy is a very, very important part of our of our um, spiritual life. Yes, Jerry, you had a question? Yes, I have a comment. Uh, I don't eat cookies because I don't buy them and they're not in my house. 
Yeah, so you're you're ahead of it. Look, Jerry's 99 years old, so if he says he doesn't eat cookies, that could be a good... Uh... <laughs> yeah, let's listen to Jerry. I mean, I eat cookies on Shabbos. I'm not extremist in, about all this. I just, you know, there's also things you can get away with when you're 20 and 30 and even 40. When you get to 50, it's harder to get away with them. But like the bottom line is, I also believe in baby steps. And I, I don't want to start preaching about what people can eat, can't eat, uh, uh, unless it's about kosher. But I do think we can all agree that exercising uh, every day is part of being a healthy person. And that'll make you a better Jew. That's what I'm trying to say. Be a better Jew the more we exercise. Okay, so... I mean, not the more we exercise, but if we exercise regularly. I don't want to like encourage people to exercise 10 hours a day. I mean, unless you're a professional athlete, then it's just taking down the wrong path. Okay, so says the uh, um, verse, Nikom, Nikmas, B'nai Yisrael, Me'isam, So, uh, God says to Moshe, take revenge. Wow. This is not the Christian Bible. This is the Hebrew Bible. Take revenge from the Midianites. And Achar God says to Moshe, take revenge against the Midianites, and then you will be gathered up to your people. So what does this mean? What does this mean? Says Rashi. Why are they being told to take revenge against the Midianites and not the Moabites? Remember, the Midianites and the Moabites together hired Bilam to uh, to curse the Jewish people. It was um, the Moabites, Balak, the king of Moabites, who went and hired Bilam. And then the Midianites uh, were the ones who caused them to sin. But why is Moshe being told to take revenge against the Midianites and not the Moabites. So says Rashi, the difference is, the Moabites entered the matter because they were afraid. They were frightened. Lest Israel go in there and, and conquer them. Because it says you shall not provoke war with them. But the Midianites, they got involved in a fight that wasn't theirs. Like, you could understand somebody who's, like, personally invested in the matter, you know, getting upset. You know, like, I I, I understand, like, let me just say a contemporary example. I understand, you know, if you're on a college campus, you see the Palestinians protesting against Israel. That's their fight. That's the Palestinians. But what about all the other people who are just joining into a fight that's not theirs? So that's what, like, this is. Like, these are joining in. You get the uh, rich, the rich white kids who grew up in the million dollar homes, and then they're chanting for Hamas. That's like that to me is uh, parallel to this case. Why are the Midianites getting in, involved in a fight that's not there? Yes, Eitan. Ramban also adds that like Moshe sends Pinchas to do this because Hashem is specifically was it, what Moshe sends Pinchas to do this because Hashem is specifically fixated on the fact that Pinchas began this mitzvah and now he has to finish it. He started doing the mitzvah and he has to see his yeah the mitzvah yeah we're not up to that verse yet but Eitan is correct the mitzvah is attributed to the one who who uh, who completes it whoever completes the mitzvah you don't get the credit for starting the mitzvah you get the credit for completing the mitzvah and that means to say this is a very important point and we're not there yet. If you're going to try to do a mitzvah, finish it. Don't do a half a job. Don't do a half a job when it comes to serving God. Okay, so now, alternatively, davar acher, why she do not take a, take revenge against Midian and not Moab? Why? So there were going to be two special um, doves that came out from Moab, and therefore for this reason, God did not want revenge against them. Who are the doves? Ruth the Moabite, and Nama the wife of Shlomo Amelach. And so Hashem therefore said not to take revenge against Moab. In verse 3, And then Moshe right away, 
even though Hashem said to Moshe, do this mitzvah and then you'll die. So what might you have thought Moshe would do? You might have thought he's going to refrain from doing the mitzvah. So we said, Moshe doesn't say that. Right away he goes and he says to the people, gather up for the army. And gather against Midian to give revenge of God against Midian. Rashi says, even though he heard that his death was dependent upon it, he acted with joy and he did not delay. I want to share with you, um, I mean, this reminds me of a story that there was a guy who was drowning uh, uh, and he was out there in the boat. And what happened was, I'm going to just tell you like this. There's a guy out there in a boat and he's drowning and they send a, and uh, his boat is sinking and he's drowning and they send a life, life uh, preserver to rescue him. He says, don't worry about me. I took a vow that I, I, I'm going to finish Shas before I die. So I'm not going to die. Leave me. <laughs> you guys like say that said he lived so long because he had he had promised that he's going to finish Shas before he dies. So therefore, for this reason, he never finished. Uh, he didn't finish his commentary because he thought he would. Uh, he, he didn't want to. He wanted to have the opportunity to finish it before he died. Hello, Aaron. Uh, All right. So we're at chapter uh, thirty-one, uh, verse uh, three. Rashi says, "Hey, Chatzu." All the people on Hashem Sadikim, righteous men. Nigmat Hashem Midian, and tell them to take revenge for God in Midian. Someone who goes against you know, it's like they're going against God. Verse 4. He says, Take Elephamate, one thousand from each tribe, Elphamate. For all the tribes of Israel, you send one thousand from every tribe. Including the tribe of Levi, Rashi says. Okay. Verse 5. So they send off from the Jewish people 1,000 from each tribe, 12,000 armed men. Rashi tells us, why does it have to tell us this, that they did it? So Rashi says, So Rashi says, the praiseworthiness of the shepherds of Israel, how much, how precious they are to Israel. Why? That before B'nai Israel heard that Moshe was going to die, what did they say? Moshe said, they want to kill me. But now they heard that Moshe was going to die and it was dependent upon the war against Midian. They didn't want to go. They refused to go. So therefore, it says, Vayimasru, they took them against their will. Meaning to say that B'nai Yisrael didn't want to send because they knew that once they went to war and defeated the Midianites, Moshe would die. So Vayimasru, they went against their will. Moshe was uh, willing to go. He went He went willingly, into, he sent them willingly into battle knowing he would die. Okay, now we get to the verse that Eitan was referring to. And he sent them with 1,000 from every army, them and Pinchas ben Elazar, the Kohen, to the army and the holy vessels and the trumpets, the blasting trumpets were in his hand. Okay, Rashi, let's read the Rashi. There's a lot of beautiful Rashi's here. First of all, why does it have to say he sent Pinchas? It tells us, Pinchas and Pinchas was equivalent to everyone. Why did Pinchas go and not Elazar? Elazar was the Kohen Gadol. God said, this is what Eitan said before, whoever starts the mitzvah, let him finish it. And that's what Ramban said, right? Also, so Ramban quotes that. Alternatively, he went to take a vengeance against, uh, he went to avenge the vengeance of Joseph, Avi Imo, the father of his mother. 
Hold on, let me just finish. Rashi about Midian, Machur Otam, because the Midianites are the ones that sold him. And so, how do we know that Pinchas's mother was from Joseph? Because it states me Benot Putiel, the daughters of Putiel. This implies that Pinchas was the seed of Jethro, who fattened cows for idolatry, and from the seed of Joseph, Shepit Beit Yitzro. So, and alternatively, Shayam Meshuach in Nochama. So basically, we've seen, and, we just, and then we'll get back to Eitan, we see three reasons why Pinchas was chosen. Three reasons why Pinchas was chosen. One is uh, that Pinchas was the one who started the mitzvah. Secondly, that Pinchas was taking revenge against the Midianites because they're the ones who sold them to Egypt, not the brothers. And the third is because Pinchas was anointed in battle. So he was the one whose job it was. Yes, Eitan, I cut you off. Rambam was simply saying that like the reason Hashem commanded them is because Pinchas started that and that if he hadn't gone and done that, then he wouldn't have said that to Moshe. He would have what? He wouldn't have said that to Moshe because Pinchas started. Pinchas started the mitzvah and, and it, he's, Hashem let him finish. Yeah. And the holy vessels, what does this refer to? This is the ark and the seats. You know what the tzitz is? It's the forehead plate. Mm -hmm. For Bilam was with the Midianites. And he will make, wow, listen what, listen to this Rashi. This is going to blow your mind. Everybody listening? Mm -hmm. Bilam was with the Midianites, and he will make the kings of Midian fly through witchcraft. And he himself would fly with them. So Pinchas displayed the tzitz to them. And the name of God was written on it. And then the Midianites would fall from the ground. And that's why it says, upon their slain ones, about the kings of Midian, that they would fall upon the slain ones out of the air. And, and similarly about Bilam, it's written, upon their slain ones. So they'd be flying in their air, and then he would show them the name of God, the forehead plate, and they would fall down. It's further proof that J.K. Rowling stole every idea from Harry Potter from Rashi. Huh. Right here, this reminds us of the scene where Harry is flying on his uh, on his broom and and uh, Snape and the guy who was the uh, dark defense against the dark arts professor was trying to take him down and Snape was trying to save him, but they thought Snape was trying to get him. Remember that? Did, any, did everybody here read this book? You never read it, guy? Yeah, you need to read the book. Required reading for Yeshua Silema. <laughs> it's a very, by the way, it's a very, very powerful book. I promise you. I'm not just saying it. It's a very spiritual book. Have you read it recently, Rabbi? You brought it up twice in the past week. I, uh, I, I read it, but my kids read it every Shabbos. They're reading it, and I hear them. I hear them. And also, when I was on the uh, plane back from... Um, from yeah, from Switzerland, I watched the movie, the Harry Potter movie. Bear, you see, Bear can answer this question. Bear, who was the person when Harry Potter was trying to fly in the sky, and there was a there was a professor of the dark arts who was trying to get him to fall down off the sky? Quirrell. What's his name? Quirrell. Quirrell. And that's like what Rashi says here that the bear that Bilam caused the Midianites to fly in, in the sky, and then Pinchas took out the seats and they fell down from the sky. J.K. Rowling stole it straight from here. Okay, beautiful. So, um, okay, next Rashi. <laughs> the the, the Pasuk says, <laughs> and they massed against Midian, and they massed against Midian like Moshe commanded, and they killed all the males. But and they killed all the kings as Evi, as Rekem, as Sura, as Reva, and they killed the five kings. And Bilam ben Baor Hargu Bachar, and they killed Bilam. Rashi says, I see that they're five. Why does it have to say five? To tell us that they're all equally involved in. We in trying to lead B'nai Yisrael astray, and so therefore they were treated equally in the punishments. Bilam went there to Midian to take payment for the 24,000 whom he had killed from Israel through his advice. And he departed from Midian to, to call upon Israel. And he gave Israel bad advice. He said to them, 
if when there were 600,000 of you, you couldn't overcome them. How are you going to overcome them with 12,000? So the Bnei Yisrael gave him his payment, and then they did not deprive him. They killed him. And Bnei Yisrael was died by the sword. He came, Bilam came against the Jewish people, and he dropped his usual weapon, which was uh, through Bnei Yisrael's, and he took Bnei Yisrael's weapon. Meaning to say, the Bnei Yisrael usually are victorious through prayer and requests from God. So Bilam sees them and he cursed them. And so they came against him with his craft, which was a sword, and that's how they killed him. So they killed him. And now we're up to a very uh, important verse. Um, they're all important, but verse 9, by Yishbu, oh, well, we have to stop in Davin. We have to stop in Davin now. Okay, sorry. We have to stop. Beautiful.